Reality TV show Shark Tank sees a lot of innovative products go by. Sometimes these products succeed and other times they completely fail. It's easy to forget that some of the most popular products on store shelves today actually got their start or at least their first taste of public recognition on this reality TV series. Entrepreneurs dreamed of landing a spot on the show to make a pitch for funding their idea or business. But some of the deals which have been struck on the show were not as good as they might have hoped. The show features well business sharks listening to pitches from excited entrepreneurs who believe that they have invented the next big thing. Sometimes with the investment of a shark, the brand skyrockets to sell millions, and other times the sharks decline and the companies go on to become the one that got away. However, here we are going to see 10 Shark Tank deals that were complete rip-offs. Early in season 5 in 2014, all five sharks on the show went in on a deal together offering a total of $1 million for 30% of breathometer. This invention was a device that acted as a portable breathalyzer and it could be plugged into the audio jack of a smartphone. It would give a reading of the blood alcohol level along with feedback to let the user know if they could legally operate a motor vehicle or if they should find a ride. While this sounded like a good idea, it ended up being a total bust. According to the federal Trade Commission, the breathometer was found to be far less accurate than promised, sometimes reporting low blood alcohol readings when it was in fact unsafe to drive. The company first tried to fix the problem by updating the app to overestimate results and then when the problem couldn't be solved, discontinued the device but without telling customers or retailers why. When Brian and Noah came into the tank in season 6, they were hoping to attract a shark to invest $35,000 into their business. They also brought along another board member, 5 year old younger brother Milo, who Brian explained was the CFO of the company, the chief fun officer. Paper Box Pilot sells sticker kits that turn a plain old ordinary box into imaginative airplanes, fire engines, and race cars. And since Kevin O'Leary is the shark most suited to the children's toy industry, as the Canadian born businessman originally made his fortune with the sale of the learning company to Mattel in 1999, it doesn't come as a surprise that he was interested. He managed to strike a deal and invest $35,000 in exchange for 50% equity stake. However, Paper Box Pilot's business has not made any great strides forward in the year and a half since its first appearance on Shark Tank. Now, many items seem to be out of stock and the company's social media has not been updated since 2018. Sweet Balls is a cake ball company owned by James McDonald and Cole Egger, who made their pitch to the Sharks asking for $250,000 for 25% of the company. Mark Cuban bid on the deal, but it wasn't long before things took a nasty turn. It turned out the business partners didn't have a good relationship and got into a lawsuit after the show. Cole Egger made a non-negotiable offer to buy out the ownership from McDonald, which made McDonald sue Egger for breach of contract. Things got even messier when Sweetballs.net was redirecting to Cakeballs.com, which Egger controlled. This led to McDonald asking for a restraining order according to the Shark Tank blog. This was one of the most embarrassing and messy deals ever to come out of Shark Tank. A West Palm Beach police officer developed the Kate app after a colleague got divorced because his wife saw text messages between him and his mistress. The app helps people being unfaithful in their relationships to wipe their phones so their secretive messages are not visible to their spouses. The founder of Kate app claims he didn't set out to sell a cheater's app, but marketing for the app includes the word mistress and advertises tools to block calls and texts so your spouse doesn't see them. Even though it was strange that a product like this entered the show, Sharks Kevin O'Leary and Damon John teamed up to invest $70,000 for a 35% stake in it. After the episode aired, they got 10,000 new downloads and most of the new customers were women. However, it looks like it did not go far. The last update from the company's Twitter account is from 2013. There are no news articles about it since that time and the website is down. 
Body Jack is the dream child of Jack Berenger. Since he had struggled with losing weight, he was told by his doctor to start doing push-ups, which he found an extremely difficult thing to do. So, he came up with something to help him out. As the Body Jack is a machine that will help you do push-ups, he made his pitch to the sharks and Barbara Cochran told him to lose 30 pounds to get an investment from herself and Kevin Harrington. He lost the weight and they invested the funds. Cochran had put $50,000 into the deal, however, the Body Jack turned out to be a big bust. The company has seemingly fallen apart without any given reason. My worst was investing in a fast-talking cowboy selling exercise equipment who needed to lose 50 pounds, Cochran told Forbes. Instead, he lost my $50,000. Shelly Eller crossed a towel with a poncho and got a patent for her creation called Show No Towels. She licensed it out to Legoland and Six Flags Magic Mountain and then went on the show where she asked for $50,000 and managed to strike a deal with Lori Grenier. However, the partnership had a bitter end. After the show, the deal turned wretched and fell apart. Grenier kicked her to the curb and after six years, the business ended. Eller even wrote on her blog, Shark Tank deal with Lori Grenier turned to crap. I once cursed my shark partner for kicking me to the curb. But now, I thank her. She taught me so much more than she thought she did, and none of it was about business. In season 1, Kwame Kude pitched a web-based company that buys back and sells some of the 10% of all unused gift cards each year in the US called Gift Card Rescue. He asked for $150,000 in exchange for a 30% equity stake but got the deal for $200,000 for 50% equity stake, while Robert Herjavec and Kevin O'Leary also got a 5% royalty with the deal. After appearing on the show, Gift Card Rescue was featured in articles within the New York Times. Forbes, Wall Street Journal, and a list of many other widely familiar publications. Having such a large increase in sales and popularity, this company became one of the most successful ones to have been aired on Shark Tank. However, as reported by the Baltimore Sun, Gift Card Rescue shut down in 2016, not too long after their Shark Tank appearance. Nikki Pope, the owner of Toy Guru Toy Company, appeared on Shark Tank in 2011 to make her pitch to the sharks. The company called itself the Netflix of toys and allowed customers to rent toys for each month. Since kids indeed get tired of their toys pretty quickly today, the business seemed like a good idea. Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary decided to invest $200,000 for 35%. However, within a year, Toy Guru stopped taking orders, suspended their social media, then filed for bankruptcy. In the end, Cuban lost every cent of this investment and there was never a reason given for the company's failure. The company posted on their website that they won't be taking new customers due to tremendous growth before filing. The company officially closed in 2016. Renata and Doug Storer made their pitch to the Sharks for an investment to fund their Night Runner business. The product they created was running shoes that were outfitted with rechargeable LED lights that would light up the trail ahead. They were successful at getting an offer with Robert Herjavec, offering $200,000 for 15% of the company. But the deal ended up not going through after the show because the business owners had a change of heart. They decided that it would not be in their best interest to take the deal. After the show, they went on to generate one and a half million dollars in revenue from the company. This was one of the worst deals for Herjavec, who thought he had a good investment, but they hung him out to dry and walked away. Icon is an invention that was the idea of firefighters as the product is a connector that hooks a hose to a fire hydrant faster and more efficiently than the old traditional method. There was so much hope for this product since it had the potential to save lives by shaving precious seconds off the process. When the firefighters pitched the deal, Mark Cuban was so impressed, he made an investment of $1.25 million into the Icon company. However, the deal ended up going south. It turned out there were issues with the licensing of the product as well as some issues with the negotiations with Mark Cuban as he tried to change the deal with the founders of the product. As it ended up, the deal that was previously agreed upon fell through, making this one of the worst deals to come out of Shark Tank. Jeff announced on Facebook that the investor's ego affected the negotiations and that once it came down to signing the deal, Mark wanted to license out the design of the Quick Connect hose attachment. The social media pages for this company have not been touched since 2015 and it seems like this company was unable to make it on its own. 
Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.